In this video, we're going to build familiarity with quantum numbers and the constraints on quantum numbers by looking at a couple of practice problems, and then we're going to get into electron configurations for the heavy elements, which is kind of our ultimate atomic goal. Essentially building a blueprint, if you like, extending that building metaphor, building a blueprint that describes where all of the electrons in a heavy atom, heavier than hydrogen, are sitting. We'll get there at the end of this video. First, let's start developing some familiarity with quantum numbers. In this problem, we're asked to indicate the number of subshells and the number of orbitals within each subshell, as well as the values of the quantum numbers L and M sub L for all of the orbitals in the N equals 4 shell of an atom. So this sounds like a lot, but if we're familiar with the constraints or the rules for quantum numbers, we can build out this essentially blueprint or scaffold, if you like, for the electrons in the atom quite easily. And it all hinges on what we talked about in the last video, the rules for quantum numbers and the constraints on their allowed values based on these rules. So the first thing to notice is we have the n equals 4 shell that we're interested in here. n equals 4 corresponds to possible L values 0, 1, 2, and 3, since the value of L must be less than n. And we can look at each L value, which is a corresponding subshell, right? S, P, D, and F, and ask how many orbitals we have within each subshell based on constraints in the value of M sub L. So for example, in the L equals 0 subshell, we have the only possibility is M sub L equal to 0, since M sub L must be between negative L and positive L, and when L equals 0, M sub L's only possible value is 0. So there's one orbital in the 4S subshell. Moving up to the 4P subshell at L equals 1, well now M sub L can have a value of positive 1, 0, or negative 1, and so there are three orbitals within the 4P subshell. Moving up to the 4D subshell at L equals 2, well now M sub L can take on any integer value between positive 2 and negative 2, and that corresponds to a total of 5 orbitals in the 4D subshell. And finally, looking at the 4F subshell, well now M sub L can take on any value between positive and negative 3. That's a total of 7 values, 7 orbitals, in the 4F subshell. So one interesting thing to note about this is if we count up the total number of or orbitals, 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, the total number of orbitals is 4 squared. And that's true of any subshell thanks to these rules. The total number of orbitals within a shell with principal quantum number n is n squared. In this practice problem, we're working with quantum numbers to deduce either the value of n and L from the orbital name, as well as the M sub L degeneracy and the number of radial nodes based on the information that's, that's there. Basically deduce the missing information from information provided. And M sub L degeneracy here just refers to the number of orbitals within that subshell, which we saw on the last slide corresponded to the number of possible values of M sub L, or its degeneracy. The first thing I want to remind us of is this formula for radial nodes. The number of radial nodes is N, minus L, minus 1. We're going to use that in a second, and we're going to use that to make some inferences from this data. So first, let's start with 4F in the first row. From that label, we can infer that the value of N is 4, and the value of L is 3. With the value of L equal to 3, the possible values of M sub L are plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, etc., etc., minus 2, minus 3. That's a total number of 7 integers between plus 3 and minus 3. And that's that's it. We've pretty much, we'll circle back to the radial notes here in a second. That's pretty much it for the 4f orbital. Now for the second case, I've got n equals 4 and l equals 1. And knowing l equals 1, the possible values of m sub l are negative 1, 0, and positive 1. m sub l degeneracy is 3. And this we would call a 4p orbital, and we'll fill that in here shortly. For the third row, all we know is n equals 7, and the m sub l degeneracy is 7. We think about that m sub l degeneracy, that means there are 7 possible values of m sub l. That means m sub l runs from negative 3 to positive 3. That implies that the value of l must be 3. This is a 7f subshell that we're referring to here. 
This could also be inferred from the number of radial nodes. Since 7 minus 3 minus 1 equals 3, that number of radial nodes tells us that the L value must be 3 in conjunction with the N value equal to 7. And finally, in the last row, we're kind of playing the same game we did in the first row. 5D means the value of N is 5. The value of L is 2. The M sub L degeneracy is then 5 because we're in a D subshell with possible values of M sub L running from negative 2 to positive 2, and so on from there. Now that we have all the N and L values down, we can calculate the number of radial nodes easily as N minus L minus 1. Zero radial nodes in the first case, 4 minus 3 minus 1. Two radial nodes in the second case, 4 minus 1 minus 1. Three in the third case, 7 minus 3 minus 1. And two in the final case, 5 minus 2 minus 1. And that's just applying this formula with the values we know. Finally, the last, last thing to fill in are the subshell labels based on the values of N and L. And we can do this easily just by correlating L with the corresponding letters. So here we have 4P, for example, since P corresponds to L equals 1. And here we have a 7F subshell since F corresponds to L equals 3.